to a celebration of a warrior. What a man of God. I was talking to the people at the hospital yesterday and today about uh, how much we're going to miss that monthly visit. It was like Elijah had come to the hospital, walking the halls, grabbing people by the hand and praying with them. Not the patients. The employees of the hospital, he prayed in my office and the director of nurse's office and, and we said how bad we're going to miss him. Psalm 1914 says, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Uncle Leonard told me that verse a long time ago that he, when he got up every morning, he said that. He quoted that verse. Folks, it's untold how many people have been blessed because of a prayer from Leonard Mayfield. I've never met anyone with such power that he had when he got on his knees. Gwen asked me if I'd like to say a prayer today and I said it would be an honor how could you say no to a person whose father has lifted our name in prayer time and time and time again? I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for his life. Can we bow together? Father, we thank you so much, first of all, for Leonard Mayfield. Thank you for his life. Thank you for, God, the way he lived. And I pray, Lord, for... For me and, and these other pastors that have grown up in his shadow, Lord, that we could learn to be more like that. Learn to pray with people more. Learn to take time and read our Bible, even when it's hard, he read. Lord, we're thankful for him, thankful for his life. I pray now, Lord, as we go into this uh, season, this season of mourning, that God, you'd send the peace that passes all understanding on this family. And Lord, we know that peace is real because we felt it before. I pray, God, for that peace that, that Uncle Leonard said he felt one night on a ship in a stormy, stormy night. God, that peace that he felt, I pray that you'd give that to the family tonight and the weeks to come. Lord, thank you that our paths crossed with this prayer warrior. Lord, we thank you for the prayers he's prayed and for the lives he's blessed. God, may we continue to shine your light in this dark world in honor and respect of Brother Leonard Mayfield. In your name we pray. Amen.
Ain't nothing like quietness and service. say praise the Lord, don't you? What a great man that we're here to celebrate his life for today. I don't have the intellect to be able to tell you all that he was because there'd still be more. He's the greatest man that I've ever known. He's the sweetest man I've ever known. He's the holiest man I've ever known. He's the prayingest man I've ever known. Praise be unto God. He was God's man. You know what? He's a reminder. He's like old Abraham. He walked with God. That's what kind of man he was. Praise be unto the Lord. I'll never forget Brother Roger Duncan telling me one time, he said that, he said, years ago, he said, I went out to the car up at the whole home place off Cold Branch Road and said, when he, he said, I went out to my car and Uncle Leonard come out there and he said, hey, Roger, where are you going? He said, well, I'm going down to have lunch down there with Larry. 
And he said, well, well, I wish you wouldn't go, but I understand. And began to talk to him a little bit, and he said, well, I tell you what, let's have a quick prayer before you leave. He said he got down on his knees and laid his head in my lap and began to weep and began to pray. He said, I had to take my old ball cap off and say, Lord, we're on holy ground. He said, he's the only man in my lifetime that I've ever known that stayed in a continual state of revival. I'll have to second that. Every time you've seen him, no matter what, he was bragging on the Lord. The other day, whenever Gwen called 911, he began to quote the Lord's Prayer. The Lord is my shepherd. And, and then he began to say that Lord's Prayer and no doubt 23rd Psalm and a dozen, half a dozen other scriptures at that time. Praise be unto God. He, he knew. He knew the Lord. He knew the Lord in an intimate way. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to know him. And you know what he would say? He'd say this. He'd say, you're all family. That's what he is. He, he, he'd never want anybody to feel left out of anything. Just, just a, a godly man. When I think about uh, him, I think about this verse in Acts chapter 17 and verse 28. He quoted it often, and he quoted a lot of Scripture. How many of you knew that? He quoted a lot of Scripture. I mean, that man, all my life, I, I put it like this, he was my go-to. If I wanted to know where something was at in the Bible before the age of doing thumb exercise, all I had to do was call 389-8332. And from the earliest of my age, I call that number and say, Leonard, where's this at in the Bible? And buddy, it didn't take him three seconds. He was quicker than Google. Can I get an amen? amen. He knew where it was at and knew what to, what to say. But in this particular verse of Scripture that he often quoted, and he did quote a lot of them, says, for in him we live and move and have our being. In him we live, move, and have our being. My earliest memories of Uncle Leonard was him preaching. And when we would take him home after church, and many of you took him home after church, and still even today here, him living just a 300 yards up the road here, people would come and pick him up out of the church here. I know Tony and Charlotte was faithful to pick him up on Sunday mornings and Rhea would pick him up and others. But I remember those early years of him preaching and I was just a boy. Many of those, uh, my cousins and brothers that are here today as we grew up in the little storefront church. Every time that man prayed, he poured his heart out. Every time he preached, he'd tell you now, 30 minutes of preaching is equal to eight hours hard labor. And he got about 24 in every time he preached. <laughs> Old preacher Kennersley used to say, oh, Leonard, don't know that his, his brakes ain't working. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember him going in, and what I remember was that light flicking on and off to let you know, it is well, I'm in the house, it's all good. And just a blessing, I don't know how many of the rest of you, but if you got saved under his preaching or after his preaching, could you throw your hand up in the house? Oh, my. God bless you. I remember going home on a Sunday night, and his words followed me. Didn't live probably a quarter of a mile up the street, but the Holy Ghost followed me home, followed me back to that back bedroom as I laid there in that little home. At that time, Route 4, Box 16, but because of the preaching of the Word of God, the Spirit began to minister to me, and I got up and ran to my mother and father and said, I need a Savior. But you know what? It came through preaching. How shall they hear without a preacher? And I'm telling you, we're celebrating the life of a great preacher today. He was co-founder of the church here with his brother Paul the last week of August in 1978. And Leonard Mayfield, I'm going to tell you something about Leonard. He was handsome. Buddy, when he went into a store, he was one of the best dressed guys you ever know. When he went in, man, he, he knew how to match better than anybody else. 
And I mean, when you went, he shot better than any woman in the building. Amen. He knew every cell. He knew where to go. He, he knew it. And he, he was a handsome man. We had a picture, you probably saw it through the slide several years ago of him. And, and I just began to think, when I think about Leonard, Leonard Mayfield, I, I think he's a handsome man. He represented the Lord well with his life, but he also uh, represented him well in how he uh, dressed and how that he went out. He always wanted to look his best. And of course, if you knew D. Mayfield, D. Witt Talmadge, a lot of them called him D and some DT, you knew him. He's one of the meanest man, men to ever live. I didn't think he liked anybody until I got about 16, started dating. I'd take girls up there and all of a sudden he got nice all of a sudden. But old Pop Mayfield, man, he, he, he was the same way. He, he would dress up. He, he, if he was going to church, he'd have on a, he, I, I don't even know. I've always heard a three-piece suit, but I think he had a five-piece. He had the hat on, vest on, pocket watch, hanging out, suit, shoes, and a cane. I mean, when he went anywhere, he, he, he how many of you remember the movie Dumb and Dumber? You know when they dressed up? He just wasn't wearing that color. But what a man of God that he was. And of course, Leonard's brothers and sisters, sweet people, good family. The three boys became preachers. I mean, what more could a family want? And not only was he handsome, I don't want to hold you too long, but there's some things I need to say. He, he was healthy. He told him at the hospital when he got up there, and he'd say, I don't know what it is. In 91 years, I don't know what it is to have a headache, a bad headache. I don't know. He was a healthy man. He walked out here. I took pictures. I would get behind him and take pictures of him while he was walking. I'd have him, one time I had him pose against the rock pillars of the church and, and take pictures of him. He would get down. He'd say, uh, uh, I, did, I did 100 push-ups today. Boy, I'm telling you, he'd, he'd do <laughs> Hold on that thought and we'll get back to it. But he'd do those push-ups. So he, he was handsome. He was healthy. He was handicapped, though. I mean, he, 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 but he didn't la let his lack of vision restrict him from having a work ethic. He gardened. He mowed. He, I, I heard when they developed that land up there behind his place, they killed 168 snakes. But not a one of them came to Uncle Leonard. You know why? Because he walked by faith, not by sight. God took care of him. <laughs> I'll tell you, we'd be on a trip and I'd take him. I had the luxury of traveling with him. And, and, and when I was a boy growing up, don't remember hardly a vacation taken without him in the car. And uh, he, he would know where to turn before that. Daddy would get lost. And Leonard would just say, oh, you need to go on down the road here about three miles, take a ride. And so he'd go down, he'd do that. And uh, but sometimes, even when I'd travel and, and take him with me and I'd be preaching, he'd say, you getting tired? I said, oh, I'm all right. And he said, well, pull over and I'll drive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. He was helpful, as I just told you. Uh, he would teach you a different language. He, he had spent time in the, uh, in the military, in the, in the Navy, right? In the Army, in the Army. But he was on a ship. And uh, whenever he um, went over, he was in Japan. And the only thing I remember of the Japanese was Coco Jantane. And we would say that and we'd laugh. And, and the girls, Bridget and Tanya, he taught them a whole song. Would y'all like to come sing that for everyone? <laughs> That would be great. Uh, he, he was just so helpful with everything. He, he, he wanted to help people. He did help you. He helped you or you wouldn't be here today. He fed you the word of God. He loved on you. When other people wouldn't love you, he loved you. When no one cared, he cared. I remember going to him some while back, just a few years ago, and I was broken. And let, let me say this for those of you that maybe don't understand this. Preachers are people. Preachers hurt. Preachers go through difficulties. People, are, preachers are like you are. I went to him one day and I was so broken. I didn't know if I could live another day. 
And to be honest with you, I don't know, I don't know that I wanted to. And I said, Uncle Leonard, I need some help. And he said, you been having a good day? And I said, no. And it, he didn't hear me. And he just began to praise the Lord. I didn't feel like praising the Lord. I started crying. He laid his hands on me. And I said, oh, I need help. He began to pray for me. And let me tell you, when he laid hands on me and began to pray, there was a lot of times. How many of you know if you took hands with him and he prayed, he'd say, do you feel that? There's a lot of times I didn't feel it. I'm just going to be honest, okay? I'm an honest preacher. I didn't feel nothing but his spit. Man, I tell you what, when I got, it, when I got ordained, he, he, I felt Methodist for a little while. He, he was sprinkling me. <laughs> but buddy, when he laid his hands on me, I knew there was something different about that man's hands. Oh, my, the Spirit of God. And that, that day he, when I was ordained to preach, there was some power that came from another land where he's abiding right now. But on that day when I needed help, he began to pray for me. And all of a sudden, halfway through that prayer, he tapped into headquarters and the Spirit of God hit me. And this might scare uh, an average Baptist to death or a Methodist or Presbyterian or whatever else you are, but the power of God's real, it floored me. I was on my face. It actually dropped me flat on my face. And healing came. He said things that day that a man can't utter. He spoke life into me that day. He was helpful. Can I get an amen? amen. He was humble. Boy, when Brother Roger came up here the first time. He came to the church to preach. I, I've heard this story a hundred times or more. Brother Leonard liked to tell it. He said, oh, and Brother Roger come. He said, me and Daddy went up to him and said, Brother Roger, do you have any place to stay? And he said, no, no, I don't. And he said, well, we'd like for you to stay with us, but we're poor people. Roger said, well, I grew up poor, but I'll tell you, one of the finest preachers in America will tell you today the best rest and the most peace he ever had was staying with Uncle Leonard Mayfield. The best. He was humble. He was the epitome of a prayer warrior. People called him from all over the country for him to pray. Brother George Blackburn, he's been with the Lord for many years. I remember the story when he called Leonard and said, Brother Leonard, you need to go pray. Roger's sick. Go pray for him. He said, I'm going to my rock right now. And he went to the rock and he called back four hours later and said, Brother George, he said, yes. He said, I've set a record today. I stayed on my rock for three hours and 45 minutes. And God told me to tell you that Brother Roger's going to be all right. That was in 1990 or 1991. I'd say he knew what God said, amen. Praise be unto the Lord. But he, he was humble. He would never take credit for anything. He, he, he would ask for help at times, but he didn't want to. Brother Steve Swales allowed him to stay in his house. And Brother Steve, you don't know what kind of treasures that you have laid up in heaven for allowing Brother Leonard Mayfield to stay in your house during that time. I told him on Sunday night, Brother Steve, he would go to his house sometime, knock on the door, and Brother Leonard wouldn't come. And all of a sudden, he'd hear him talking from the inside and put his ear to the door, and Brother Leonard would be praying in there. And Steve said, on at least two occasions, I had to fall down at the foot of the door and get on my face because the power of God was so strong from that man praying inside that home. He was bold when he had to be. He told about when after he'd gotten saved, and he said, I, I don't understand it, but he was on the top of a truck. He said, when I came to myself, I was in the spirit, and I was on the top, top of a truck. He said, I went home, and obviously, I, I told you, Papa, I wasn't mean at one time. He went to him, and he said, Daddy, it's either me or you. What did he mean by that? He meant something's going to happen. It's going to be me or it's going to be you. But God's going to have to do something. 
And it was that Sunday. That old pop went there and he jumped up and shouted. Bless God, he said when he walked out of the church that day, the leaves looked like gold on the trees. Oh, what happened? That's called old-fashioned Holy Ghost felt salvation, amen. He got the goods. Praise God, he was a humble man. He, he was, uh, tell this, he, when, he, when he would pray, he was also happy. He'd get to laughing. Now, I like to laugh. I don't know about you. I spent enough time crying. I've cried enough for all of us today. But he was a happy man. He'd get happy in service. And he'd close them eyes tight and go, whoo! <laughs> Wave them hands. He was getting under the spout while the glory run out. He was happy. And he, he told some funny, th- I'm going to tell some things and I'm going to go ahead and say you might ought to get ready. He was at my house one time and Brother Roger was with him and, and Brother Roger likes to have a big time. And Leonard kept saying, Brother, we need to go. It's getting close to church time. Brother, we need to go. And if you know Brother Leonard, if he got something on his mind, it didn't matter what. You were going to do what he wanted to do. And so they went out in the car, and they were sitting there, and they're they're still sitting there. And I went outside, and I heard the car, and I thought, what are they doing? And as I'm looking out through there, it's just Leonard and Brother Roger. And all of a sudden, smoke fills the cab immediately. I thought, what in the world? The windows was up, and I ran out there. I said, what happened? He said, firecracker. (laughs) And I started laughing. And I mean, the smokes filled the cab. And Leonard never said a word. I got to church that night, and Roger said, he said, you won't believe it. And I said, what? And he said, we got about halfway home. And Leonard said, I just hope my ears stop ringing before service tonight. (laughs) <laughs> Another time Roger was staying with him at his house And Roger said while I was standing there He said a, a mouse run down my back while I was asleep He said and then one bit me on my finger He said He said boy He said and then later Leonard said hey Come in here He went in there and one of them little mice was stuck on one of them little sticky pads And he said Roger you're going to have to kill him I can't see him And hand him some pliers to knock the little fella out with. He said, we got to go to Walmart and get some of them pads. He said, I kept a box to know which kind to get. So they loaded up and went to Walmart. And Leonard, he had the box under his coat like this and was hiding it. And he got to thinking. He said, well, Brother Roger, he said, you know, he said, uh, People know me, but they don't know you. You being from Florida, said, why don't you try to find these pads? He said, if they find out, if somebody finds out around here, I've got mice, it'll cut down on my company. (laughs) Roger said, ah, give me that box. And said, they walked around and couldn't find it and said, a woman came up and started, can I help you? And I think Brother Leonard knew her and they began to talk. And he, Brother Roger said, you sure can. Said, this man's house is eat up with rats. (laughs) And you know what he said? Mmm. How many of you know that? Mmm. Oh, my. (laughs) Brother Paul had took him down. I believe it was Walmart and took him down there. And they came out. And Brother Leonard got ahead of him. And while they were there, there was two cars. And there was another car that looked like Brother Paul's. And... Leonard went over to the wrong car, and he was trying to get in. There was a man in it. He opened up the door and went to get in. The man was on the phone going. (laughs) Him and Aiden was down in in Tampa. Brother Aiden, another elder. Him and Brother Paul are remaining elders. And Brother Aiden's 94 years old. And Aiden would drive down there to Tampa, Florida, and they always liked to go to Shoney's. And whenever they pulled up to Shoney's, Leonard and Aiden said, my goodness, boy, they is a crowd here today. Well, they said, my, just kept talking how big that crowd was. 
And they got out, and it was a dealership, a car dealership. <laughs> but Shoney's was next to it, and they went and ate. And then when they left, Aiden pulled out and was going down the wrong way of the four lane. And the preacher behind them said that Aiden cut through the media and said, Leonard Ted, he said he was just <laughs> throwing him around in there. Reminds me of Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe had a 1967 Chevelle Super Sport with a four, Muncie four-speed 396, I mean 375 horse, I mean had it all. And told Leonard, I'll take you for a ride. And Leonard got in there reluctantly and got in there and Joe was really going to show out and smoke the tires and did a, try to do a big U-turn and run straight into the bank. <laughs> Threw Leonard up near through the windshield and said, you've hurt my knee and my back. Let me out of here. I seen Billy back there and some people. He was at Gobbler's Knob. The church the, before they came to Hayesville was up on uh, Lower Bell Creek. And they'd went up there and there was a man that came up and he had shoulder issues. <laughs> Leonard called the man up to get prayed for. And when the man came up, he began to pray and he said, raise your right arm. And he raised it. And he said, raise your left arm. And he raised it. In the middle of the prayer, he went, ah, don't touch me the man's arms come out of joint in the skyward position and the man walked out of the back of the church and left with his hands up and brother Leonard stood there and went somebody didn't have the faith you know my take on this that man wasn't doing enough praise and God said I'll lock you I took Frank Bratcher from up in, outside of uh, Nashville, Tennessee, Carthage, Tennessee, and I took him. He had brought me back home. We were in a meeting, and him and his wife, Brenda, and they went, and we went out to the rock out there where the old rock was in the ground, and uh, Brother Bratcher had an ingrown fingernail. He wanted to see that rock, and we went. And Brother Leonard grabbed a hold of his finger and began to pray. I mean, it was bad. And... Uh, Brother Frank went, mmm. Well, Leonard thought that was the Holy Spirit touching him. So his grip, I mean, he had a grip, buddy. I mean, I'm telling you what, he'd hurt you in his younger days. He bared down on that finger and he went, oh. Well, Frank's wife knew what was going on and got to laugh and he thought she was in the spirit. And buddy, I'm telling you what, it was on then. He had, Brother Frank was down on a knee begging God to let him go. You know the funny thing about it, his finger got better after that. <laughs> these, are, these are real stories. I, I seen Mike back there. Mike looked a lot like Leonard, just the silhouette of his head. And Years ago, Leonard liked boxing. He would sit in front. I remember him sitting on that little stool that was made out of rope in front of the TV that close, snowing, could barely see it watching boxing. And Leonard would get in front of that TV, and I mean, he would, he would really get into it. And Mike kind of come up to him one time, and it's, you know, when you hit your chest and act like you're going to hit somebody. And he went up to Leonard and went, but he hit him. And I mean, just as soon as he hit Leonard, Leonard then, then took a right hook and popped him. You know, he'd come at you and say, he'd say, hey, try to stab me. You know, and he'd put you in a, all kind of a, an arrest. <laughs> he told me a joke one time. He said, one time there's a, a big woman come down to pray. He said, and she got down to the altar and her knees was sticking out and said, the preacher laid his hands on her knees and said, God, please touch these two little bald-headed boys that come down here to pray. <laughs> so you know what I did? I already told the joke and told him that was Leonard was the preacher that prayed. <laughs> we were in a big meeting here. I mean, the place was full. Balcony was full of people everywhere. And, and let, Brother Leonard come up here. He had something to say. And when he had something to say, I ain't going to tell him he can't speak. Right? If he's got something to say, I'm, I'm going to come on. He'd get it, but I'd stay close. And he, 
And the girls told, told me, said, boy, I'm glad you always did. We was afraid he'd say something out of the way. He never did. But he got up here and, and he said, stand up. I said, stand up. Stand up. And I was right here and I said, they're standing. He said, raise your hands. <laughs> I'll give you a few Leonardisms. Good night, goodbye, good luck. How much do you weigh? You ladies appreciated that, amen. Feel this. The Spencers, one of the greatest groups in the history of Southern gospel music. He went up to Miss Spencer and said, how old are you? You're quite a bit older than me. <laughs> and, then, and then he said, feel this. <laughs> and her husband, J.B., sitting there with his head cocked. <laughs> but it didn't take long. Who they, they figured out who it was, and they were so thankful to get to talk to him. A lot of, listen, some of the greatest preachers that I know, and there's great preachers here today that served, served here in the church or served in other meetings and churches connected with the church here, they'll tell you they didn't know a more holier man. I mean, some great preachers that I've talk, talked to, and I've been called Roger Duncan, Billy Fields, Jack Lasseter, C.T. Townsend, Dr. Joe Arthur, Dr. Ralph Sexton, these men knew there's something different about Leonard Mayfield. When he laid hands on, I took Calvin Ray, Dr. Calvin Ray Evans and Dr. Joe Arthur to Apartment 31. I want y'all to pray for me that I can write a book called Apartment 31. Randy was with me. I took them in there. And, he, and Leonard said, oh, praise God. He said, you brought me some preachers. He said, well, what can I do for you? And I said, Brother Leonard, I want you to pray for them. He said, okay, <clears throat> kind Jesus. And I mean, when he said that, he put both hands on those men's heads. And then they went down to their knees. And then they went down to their face on the floor. And when they got up and walked out of there, they said, that man, that man walks with God. That man. You know what he would say? He'd say, right quick. Wasn't nothing quick about it. <laughs> He'd say, ain't God good. He'd say, the Spirit will get the job done. And then so many times our men would hear him pray, Lord, as he'd weep and say, it's getting dark down here. Lord, it's getting dark. Let me tell you something this evening. It is getting dark down here. And it's getting dark because of sin. It's getting dark because we don't have as many people as we have like Leonard Mayfield around who will spend time in prayer and agonizing before the Lord and reading their Bible and staying close to God. No, because men have decided to follow their own way and their own wicked works and they're on their way to a devil's hell forever. This man cared. He prayed. He persevered. He went through hard times, as I said. You know what else he'd say? He'd say, holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Somebody said, what do you think he's doing right now? I'd say he's probably saying, holy, holy, holy. He said those four beasts that were created by God to worship all the time. And one would say holy. And then another one would say, no, he's holy. And then the next one would say, no, he's holier than that holy. And then the fourth one would say, no, he's holier than those last three. And then he'd start all over again. Holy, holy, holy. And he'd say, if those beasts were made to worship him, how much more that we are redeemed should be worshiping and praising the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Amen. Well, we didn't come to hear preaching. Well, you didn't come to the right place then. Because preaching goes on here. It doesn't matter if it's a funeral or what. Let me tell you something. It's about holiness. One of, he said, one of these days, I'm going to sit down at the marriage supper of the Lamb. And when I do, I'll be able to sit at one end. And I'll see all the way to the other end. And he said, I'll know everybody by name. And you know what? I'm just old-fashioned enough to think God's going to give him a seat at the head of the table. 
Yeah, he also said, he'd say, I'm just a country boy looking for the city Brother John saw coming down out of heaven. And he said, one of these days, this old country boy is going to become a city slicker. He said, the little cotton picker, thank God, is going to be a city slicker. But he also said, God didn't promise that the crate wouldn't get damaged, but he did promise that the goods would be delivered. Let's get a hold of that. Would you think that'd come from a third grade education? No, that come from God. That come from wisdom. He had more wisdom than people that's got a double doctorate of theology. It doesn't matter. That man knew God, walked with God. He was a holy man. He was holy. That's it. He was holy. And I, I know all the family, children, grandchildren. He loved you. He talked about you. Gwen, excellent daughter and taking care of your daddy and a husband to support you. Tanya and Bridget, my goodness. And Kay and, and Paige. I don't see Paige. Is she here? Yes. Is Paige here? Where are you at, Paige? Oh, in the nursery. I can't see you in there, but I'm talking to you. He loved you girls. And Helen, he loved you till he drew his last breath. He loved you. At my granddad's funeral, my great-granddad, Leonard's daddy's funeral, I'll never forget Brother Leonard getting up and saying, I got a word I need to say. Nobody thought he could say anything. Him and Papa was close. Him and his mama was closer, for his mama taught him how to pray. But he got up and said, I want to say a word. And many, I remember it. People would say, Ain't no way Leonard can make it on his own. How's he going to make it? With God. He got up that day, Brother Mike, and when he did, Tim, he said this. He said, I lost a baby. And he said, when we lost that baby, he said, I felt my God just a little bit deeper. He said, I lost my eyesight. But I... I didn't think it would get any worse. He said, but I, I felt my God just a little bit deeper. He said, my marriage failed. He said, but all the hurt. And he said, I felt my God just a little bit deeper. He said, mama, my best friend, died. He said, I didn't think a man could hurt any worse. But he said, I felt my God just a little bit deeper. And he said, today, my daddy has gone on to be with the Lord. He said, but I feel my God deeper than I've ever felt him before. Could you imagine if you could talk to him today? How deep <laughs> is the presence of God? Oh, he's deeper than the deepest ocean. He's higher than the highest star. He's wider than the east is from the west. And Leonard would say, I am deep right in the middle of God. For in him we live, move, and have our being. Now, now this evening, what about you? You've come to pay your respects. There's probably a lot of sinner friends that wouldn't come in because they're scared. Because that man had so much of the God on him. It wouldn't shock me if he's resurrected. No, we serve a mighty God. He, God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Some might say, oh, I know that Leonard. Man, I, I ain't where I ought to be with God. I ain't going in there. He might rise up and preach again. But the truth of the matter is, 
the man we call Uncle Leonard, Brother Leonard, Preacher Leonard, Precious Leonard. The little cotton picker preached his own service today through a life that he lived for his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And his last prayer is still being heard. I spoke on this Sunday night. The prayers that this man prayed. Now, don't, 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 don't write this off. You need to listen. The prayers that this man prayed will outlive his body. The prayers uttered from this man's lips are still in the presence of God. Though his heart is stopped beating, the prayers that it came from are still present in the throne room of the Holy of Holies of heaven. Because, see, in heaven, there is no time. And the prayers of God's saints will go on for generations and generations for those that are not yet the great grandchildren that he has. And those that will come, family, we can tell them all oh, you've been prayed for. <laughs> you've been baptized in prayer because of Leonard Mayfield. Hey, some of you sitting in this crowd today, you're not where you ought to be with God. And you know that. Why don't you just make it right today? Say, from this day forward, I'm going to serve the Lord. If you got children, I'm going to raise my children right. I'm going to be the man or the woman that God called me to be. And you know what that'd be? That'd just be another answered prayer from Leonard Mayfield. As you bow your heads. All over this place today, if you could lift your hand and say, I'm saved, I know I'm saved, I'm on my way to heaven, I'm not ashamed of it. Could you slip up your hand? That's me. You can put them right back down. How many of you would say right now today, I'm not, I'm not where I ought to be with the Lord. And I'd like for you to pray for me when you pray. Because I sure am going to be one, God bless you, God bless you. I'm going to try to be one of those, God bless you. That fills the shoes of this man. The mantle's been left here. Who will take it up? Who will march on for the Lord Jesus Christ? Kind Jesus, Lord, thank you. God, for these folks that are here today. God, I pray you bless the remaining part of this service. God, should there be someone here that need, needs to be saved or someone who needs to re-up with you, God, I pray that you do that. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, we've got a short video. We're going to show it this time, and I hope it'll be a blessing to you. It's good to be on the old ship Zion today, ain't it? Good to know Jesus Christ. The greatest one you can know is the Lord. The greatest one that saved me is the Lord. Many, 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 many years ago, God saved me. It went in over the Pacific and didn't get hurt. Praise God. God is still on the throne. He still answers prayer. He's still God. He doesn't change. He doesn't change yesterday and today and forever. And we follow the Holy Ghost God that we do grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because we never get as close as we want to in this life. But bless God, we can strive to grow for His glory. 
His honor and His mercy. It's God. It's God. If you're blessed and got a good family, God gave it to you. Praise God. If you got victory, God give you that. It's not of us so good, but God is good to us. God is great. When you have something happen good in your family, thank God for it. Thank God for it. He blesses us more and more and more. He, he saved me back many, many, many years ago. He's still... He's never changed. He's still God. He's the almighty God. He's always there. <laughs> Praise God. I know as a boy, right quick, I'll hurry up here. When he was going overseas back in the 40s, and uh, I was on a ship, and he'd be in a country boy, and young, and just had turned 18. He's on the ship, and he's rocking and cracking at night, and boy's clothes was swinging out, and I admit, I got scared. And I said, Lord, if I go out, I'll just go to sleep in you. I got the best night's sleep that night. God is good. I'm glad we can depend on him. Men might let you down, but God will never let you down. Let us never, let us never let God down. You get blessed by God. You got a good family. You thank God every day for your family. Teach your children the ways of righteousness, and when they grow old, they won't depart from it. Woo! Praise God. He is the Lord, the same yesterday and today, and he doesn't change. Praise God. <laughs> He's so great and so marvelous. We can tell about the goodness of God. He's answered many, many, many prayers from this old man. But thank God it's not because I was good, because he is merciful to me. God is great. God is good. Thank you. And may God bless you and keep you and bless this service tonight. We love you. All of you. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Praise the Lord. That was on June 30th. Right there. This year. Let me tell you something, church. He loved you. He loved this church. So proud of the things, the ministry that's going on here at this, this church. And because of that man's prayers, that's why it's here. Amen. This was his favorite song, Heaven's Jubilee, page 110 in the red back hymnal. I mean, he'd request it about every Sunday. Let's all sing it together now. I'll see Jesus in the air He's coming after you and me Joy is ours to share What rejoicing there will be When the saints shall rise Head for that jubilee Yonder in the skies Oh, why singing Oh, why shouting On that happy morning When we all shall rise Oh, why glory Glory, hallelujah When we meet our blessed Savior in Twinkling of an eye changed with them to be All the living saints to fly to that jubilee Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting On that happy morning when we all shall rise Oh, what glory, glory, hallelujah When we meet our blessed Savior in the skies When with all that heavenly host we begin to sing, singing in the Holy Ghost, how the heavens will ring. Millions there will join the song, with them we shall be. Praising Christ through ages long, heaven's jubilee. Oh, what singing, oh, what shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory, glory. God's people said, can you give God praise right now? Amen. And here's what he had want. He loved this. 
We're not dismissing. We're going to get our hands in the air. We call this exercise. We learned it from this man over here. And we're going to shout praise the Lord just as loud as we can. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Turn it over to the funeral home at this time.